Good day, good day everybody. Welcome back to the channel and again I just gotta say you guys do it to me every week. All the new subs, all the likes from my last vlog of my send down at the old seven bridge. I'm glad you liked it. Such a great response. All I could do is just say thanks and wow, it's quite overwhelming really, but on with today, a new vlog. And today, as you can see, you find me in the woods. Now, I thought it was gonna be a bit foggier than this and we got forecast rain, so I might skip a bit of B-roll and just, uh, just get straight onto it. Today, I'm actually gonna be looking mainly at using paths and tree roots, either as foreground interest or leading lines into the actual image. So I'll have a little look around and see what we can find. So I think I found something, but do you know what? All those people, you know, when you joke, it's behind you. Well, it was. So I was only speaking to you just past those trees just back there and I've walked up here and I found this. Now I think this has got the makings for a pretty nice shot. So I'm gonna get myself set up and uh, I'll talk you through it. Right, so setup is complete. But before I explain the shot and uh, why I've placed things in the arrangement I have, Friday last week, did any of you guys go out? There was the most amazing fog. I was uptown buying Christmas presents and birthday presents for their wife who was 42 yesterday, happy birthday. So you can imagine I had one eye on the presents and one eye on the fog. Nevertheless, I did luckily enough as soon as i got home chuck the camera bag in the boot and i was off so i might just treat you now to a couple of shots which i took the other day which i was going to go back to today but as the fog wasn't here that's why i'm in the woodland so as i just as it refined this composition i'll let you have a look at them So I hope you enjoyed those. It was absolutely fantastic, fantastic bit of fog, I must admit. Now, those images I've wanted for two or three months. I, uh, I was shooting with Mini Noob, my son, who's usually with me, but he's not today, he's got school. So I'm, up, I'm by myself. But yeah, three or four months ago, we were gonna do a shoot in a vlog in Wales. And the fog was amazing. We passed that church, which you saw in the images, but we didn't stop. So there's a lesson to you all out there. If you see something, just stop and take. It doesn't take that long to get the shot. So I'm glad I got the opportunity, albeit wait three or four months to do so, but I think it's worth it, don't you think? Anyway, on with this one. Let me turn you around and I'll show you what my thoughts are. So here we have it. It isn't going to be shot uh, landscape like you guys are seeing. I'm actually going to tilt it on end and we're going to shoot this portrait. So I'm going to have this path just here. That's going to be in the bottom right hand corner. And that kind of leads on and follows on around here. And I kind of like this tree here and the tree behind it because the path loses itself and it gives itself a little bit of mystery. So I think, I think it might work. We've got just enough kind of haze in here. So I'm not too worried about even if I show sky in the shot. Usually I don't like to do that because it draws too much attention, but I think I'm going to be able to get away with it. It's very still, which is absolutely brilliant. So I've got no, only just a slight bit of movement on this little bit of beach here. So uh, I think I should be okay. So let's get the shot done. I've popped the, uh, the image on the back LCD screen. I'm gonna explain what I'm doing so you can see exactly what I'm seeing through the camera. As you can see, this here is not gonna be a problem today, which is great because it is slightly misty. So first of all, I'm just gonna check what we've got going on. So 
First of all, here we go. That's what I mentioned. Path in the bottom corner. I've actually got that tree. I think it's important that's on that line of thirds. And the path just snakes up through the middle, just touches the centre of the frame, then off out to the other side, which I really quite like. Histogram's looking okay. Not clipping, only slightly bit, but like I say, I'm not too worried about this kind of stuff at P. I I think we're going to be absolutely fine. And obviously, we're level. So the next thing I can do is take this shot. What I'm going to do is I'm going to focus stack simply because I want all this to be in focus. So I'll bring that in like I showed you guys last week on, on auto. So as soon as that's gone green, green square, see that? Now what I'm going to do is just lock that in to manual focus and I'm taking the shot. So that will give me excellent foreground interest and great detail. Right, now what we're going to do, I'm going to shift my focus point. I'm going to go just above third in the image for my second point, zoom into there, and I'm going to flick my switch back onto auto. There we go, focused in, square's gone green, switch back to manual, and hit the shot. There, that's looking fantastic. Slight bit of clipping up there, as you can see, but it's nothing I'm too worried about. I can pull that back quite easily in Photoshop. There you go, that's the first image complete. Hope you like it. I'm going to pop it up on the screens now for you to view. And any thoughts, any comments, don't be afraid to put them below. Thank you very much, guys. Right, on to the next one. Welcome back. Hope you enjoyed that. I think it was really nice, which is a plus for me because I find woodland photography extremely difficult. So I thought today, do you ever have those mornings where you wake up like I do and you're like, oh, God. oh. you just feel deflated, beaten, and you just can't be asked? Well, today was that day, and I've learned over the years, you know, everyone's got mental health kind of issues, so you've just got to know your best way of coping with them, manage them, mine is to get out, but today it was a bit of a struggle. So I looked out the window, I saw the fog, I thought, yeah, let's go. And I thought, ah, nah, it's nice and warm in here, it's cold outside. In the end, gave myself a good old kick up the ass and got me bag together and I'm out. And already, as you saw, I've walked 200 meters from the car, turn around and there was my first image, so. Can't all be bad, can it? Can't all be bad. You know, I think sometimes it's just about breaking that cycle, isn't it? Let's me puffing, man. Cool. I've only just walked up there. Yeah, it's all about breaking that cycle, isn't it? Changing focus. You know, changing your mindset from something negative into something positive. It does the trick to me for me I'm not saying it's easy but yeah if you can if you're able just get yourself out get yourself out and enjoy Whew. the wonders of nature oh, so good recharged recharged yes Also, you'll be pleased to know that me and Mini Noob have chosen our 10 locations each for our challenge. Now, I did say shoot to the death, and I think that's taking a little bit too far. However, 
when speaking to locals, like I've given you advice before, if you need to know anything about the location you're in, speak to locals. Well, <laughs> you need to be very careful how you word what you're saying. So a couple of weeks ago, I did that video where I needed, said I needed your help and the exposure compensation button, etc., etc., which is great because I now know that because I shoot manual, it doesn't even work, it doesn't apply to me. So no wonder I can get it to work. So halfway from my shoot, I walk around the lake, start speaking to this old guy. He was uh, fly fishing for rainbow trout. I had about a five, 10 minute chat with him. And uh, we got onto the subject of deer. And my son loves shooting deer with me. Um, and I happened to mention that earlier on in the first lockdown, we'd been shooting deer. So this old guy turned around to me and said, yeah, yeah, I shot Muntjac. Bloody lovely it was, bloody lovely. So all I'm trying to say is that uh, I'm trying to change my language because all you guys know what I mean when I say I'm shooting images of trees or shooting an image of a deer but sometimes <laughs> the locals especially down in the forest of dean had no clue what i was on about so i need to be a bit more mindful right <sighs> a bit hot now <laughs> it's a bit of a drag getting up there but Another top tip, if ever you walk past something like I just did and you have to take a second glance, blowing bubbles, man. Take a second glance, then what you need to do is go and investigate. And this is what caught my eye. Nothing spectacular, but I think it could be a really nice image here. Ah, look at that. Again, pathways. It just draws the eye down into it. So I think I might... Um, I might whack my tripod up, get the camera out and see if there's actually going to be an image in this. I think there might be. Again, because I can keep it quite low, keep that sky out of it. Now, as you can see, it's only like 20 minutes since I took the other shot, but that, that mist has uh, kind of dissipated a little bit, which is a bit disappointing, but I think we should be all right. So, oh God, knackered. So you would have just seen me walking up and down this track, but not only just walking up and down it to try and get the right view I want on the image, I also like to um, change the elevation point um, just to get a proper look at the subject to make sure I've got it exactly as I want it. But also it changes the, um, the dimensions of the whole photo. I'll show you actually. So there, yeah, so if we, we could go really low down, Oh yeah, go really low down then as we change the perspective as we go up, the whole image starts to change like that. This is where I first started off and this was going to be my image of choice, obviously cropped in slightly to those trees. But then I decided to move backwards and I thought it would be quite nice here because we've got these grasses and little bits of birch over there which are just hanging on for dear life. And I thought that would make it a lot more interesting than if I just had it here, because this is all quite bare. So I want these bits just to add a little bit of interest to my shot in the foreground to then lead your eye on up through it. So yeah, it's always good to survey what you're doing. And have a real good look before you commit to sticking the camera on the tripod and pressing the button. So give us a second and uh, I'll set up. There we go, there's the second comp on the back of the LCD screen. Lovely level, exactly what I was talking about. Let's get rid of this so you can see it. So I am slightly underexposing. I shan't go through um, both shots on the focus stack. Focus in here, focus somewhere down there. I've got these trees on each of the thirds. The path goes straight up the middle and I think it's gonna be absolutely wonderful. Really is, I just gotta wait because as you can see here, we've got a slight bit of breeze, so. 
I might have to wait around for a few moments just for that to settle down before I press the button. But yeah, I think I like it. That was a close one. Things have been going uh, so well. After that last video clip, I turn around to find my GoPro and my little LED light on the tripod fall over onto stones like that. Unfortunately, everything's okay. So, onward with the vlog. And I'm just looking probably just for one more location just to finish off what I'm trying to do here today. I think it's been a really valuable exercise just for myself just stopping you know when you see something and you see a path and just just take your time to see what's available you know when you get it on camera because sometimes without getting the camera out to have a look it, you just don't know because there's so much you know you look at a scene like this there's so much distraction around that as soon as you bring out your camera it kind of makes that frame and takes everything else away from it so you can really hone into what you're trying to take. So I'll keep walking and I'll keep looking. I'll bring you back online when I think there's something we might be able to shoot. I've just actually remembered what I said at the start of the vlog that this was about foreground interest. Yeah. Paths. Yeah. And routes. So what I need to find now is a really, really nice image which is going to have a root system in, in the foreground or as a leading line. So I think that's my next challenge. Whew. So hopefully I'll find something soon. You know, I've got about five hours before it gets dark. So fingers crossed. And I think I found the perfect spot. So I'm going to take you off the tripod. Hang steady. There we go. And I'm going to show you what I've got here. Look at that. Not just there. We've got some lovely, lovely exposed tree roots, which goes up to that tree there. But also there's a pathway to the left. So I'm thinking of setting up round here because this looks absolutely brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. I'm liking the look of this here, especially if I get this one here on the third, that one on the third and that one spaced. It can't be in the middle because of what the image is going to look like. But I think there's an image here. I really do. Right, as you can see, I've got the camera set up for this shot. And what I like is... As I explained um, just a few moments ago, there's, there's these roots which lead up to that middle tree. And also the, we've got a lovely tree here, lovely tree here. So they're both on my line of thirds. This one's slightly off centre, but I don't mind. The good thing about this composition is we've got trees that kind of like irregular gaps. And if you're taking any shots, what I have learned about wooden photography is never take a shot with, say, two trees, four trees, six trees. It's just one of those rules like the rule of thirds but this if we've got one dominant two dominant and three dominant what it does is it creates interest because your brain automatically sees two four six eight quite easily but three five seven etc it has to think about that so that's where you create the extra interest so i think um i'm gonna slightly underexpose this because this is still quite bright up here and then i will probably just crop it on the bottom about here and that should be a finished image I will look at taking another one I think in a moment in that direction there because I think there's an image there but just for the moment I need to get this one done a 
looks like I'm definitely having one of these days look in my flask now it's decided to fall apart so it doesn't matter though as long as I can still get the coffee out we'll be all good what a mess managed to finish my coffee off that's the main thing i think my luck's running out first the gopro now my flask got it i think that that last image is going to be the last image but on that note i have had a very very good day i have learned an awful lot as well it's just it's so different to what i'm used to and it's good to challenge yourself the last couple of weeks we challenged ourselves quite a bit so yeah i think this has been quite rewarding for me. And if it's been of any interest or rewarding for you in, uh, in terms of tips or techniques or anything I've shared today, then if you love it, this kind of photography as much as I do, then it might be a good idea for you to subscribe. And do us another favor, give it a like. Anyway, from this lovely woodland forest, I bid you farewell. Take care, look after yourselves, and I'll see you on another one very, very soon. Cheers. Mm -hmm.